The assistance from USID, it came in at the time when we really needed it. When Kenya government had difficult challenges with donors, one program that never suffered was our partnership with USAID. We owe much gratitude uh, to those Americans who had the vision and who worked with our own politicians to make that lift uh, possible. Forever, USAID should live and grow and multiply. This film is really marks the celebration. Uh, it marks 50 years of partnership uh, between Kenya and the United States. Um, and I hope that this film will show a couple of different things. The variety of programs and activities that have occurred over the last 50 years uh, and the impact that they have had uh, on Kenya, uh, on the Kenyan people. Pamoja Tuta Faulu, together we will succeed. Securing Kenya's future is closely linked to strengthening its public health. Kenya is one of eight countries selected under President Barack Obama's $63 billion global health initiative. USAID's health and population program is by far the mission's largest. Combating the HIV AIDS epidemic in Kenya is at the heart of the program. Working through the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, and partnering with the Kenyan government, it is one of the largest U.S. government investments in HIV. An estimated 6.3 percent of Kenyans are HIV positive, and the stigma remains strong. USAID supports HIV AIDS programs in every province. It also sponsors nearly 600,000 AIDS orphans and vulnerable children. At the Nyumbani Orphanage in Nairobi, Sister Mary Owens houses 111 HIV positive children, with the ultimate aim of reintegrating them back into their extended families and communities. USAID supplies her with their daily antiretroviral medication. I am extremely grateful to the American people for what has been made possible for our children. You know, tears come to my eyes when I realize the great gift of the antiretroviral medication for our children and also the support for these destitute children living in the resource limited communities surrounding the city of Nairobi. For health workers, the biggest challenge is to get people tested and counseled before they fall sick. Early testing means more controlled transmission, fewer orphans, fewer HIV-positive newborns, and staying healthy longer. But how do you convince people who feel healthy to get tested and, if necessary, treated? The solution was to bring the health workers to the community an army of counselors working village by village and house by house. Dr. Samson Ndege heads HIV prevention at USAID-funded AMPATH. We realize that getting the community involved through their leadership increases the acceptance rate. The counselor cannot just walk into any house without getting the permission through this community member we get up to 97% entry of the homes. It is then the counsellor that provides all the package that is in our own based counselling and testing. That is the HIV counselling and testing itself, the TB screening, the issues of malaria prevention, and documenting antenatal attendance by pregnant women, and also immunisation status. after the, the prick and putting the sample into the test kit and waiting for the results, it takes up to 15 minutes. And there is pre-test counseling given to the client and also told to read the results. We do enter the data. We use a G1 phone. So the data is electronically entered at the household. And this information is able to be relayed directly into our computers 
and we should be able to analyze the data as we continue doing the process. It is very quick in data analysis. We don't have a lot of errors. AMPATH has so far tested and counseled close to 500,000 people. If they are HIV positive, they are immediately linked to care. As of mid-2011, USAID Kenya was the major provider of antiretroviral medication for nearly 500,000 Kenyans. AMPATH is, is what it is today because of the support we get from USAID. Given the strategy we have adopted, I think we will win the war. Malaria is one of Kenya's biggest killers. 77% of Kenyans live in endemic malaria areas. 34,000 children under five die of malaria every year. In 2010, USAID and other donors provided for free to Kenyans 11 million treated mosquito nets through a mass distribution campaign. In Koibatek district, hours from a paved road, men and women come to collect their nets from a government health clinic. Most have never owned or used a mosquito net. For these nets which we have been provided to help, we shall use them. If we use in several houses, at least we shall control malaria. In the 1980s, Kenya's fertility rate was one of the highest in the world. Today, the population is growing at a rate of 2.6% a year, an average of five children per woman. Kenya is growing by one million people a year. More people means more people needing health care, schools, jobs, and more pressure on the environment and resources, such as land and water. Overall, more people is a greater stress on state stability. In 2010, USAID invested nearly $21 million on family planning programs in Kenya. There are now USAID-sponsored programs in all of the 4,000-plus government-run clinics in Kenya. Prioritized because of high birth rates are Kenya's most marginalized, the pastoralist, almost entirely Muslim populations of Kenya's northern arid lands bordering Somalia, an area about one-third of Kenya. Here, the distances are so vast and dry that it can take days by car on cratered dirt and sand roads to reach some of the clinics. And when the rains do come, roads are impassable for days. In Masalani town, a four-hour drive in a world away from Garissa, the district capital, the family planning project, called Family Spacing, for cultural and religious reasons, is one of USAID's most successful in Kenya. The key ingredients, community involvement. Their biggest allies, the community religious leaders, or imams. Abdullahi Mahat Daoud, deputy project director for Afya Plus, USAID's partner on the ground, says the imams understand that family spacing promotes better mother and child health and is of economic value to the entire community. For us in Northern Ireland, specifically for Northeastern province and even Tana, the issue was closed and sealed that family planning is not Islamic and therefore anybody seen to practice has become unfaithful. That was the concept. So we needed to break, to unfold that seal, open it up to people and make their decisions. One method that really helped us was the introduction of cycle beads. The cycle bead is very natural. It's very enticing to the clients. One quarter of Kenyan married women want to plan their families but do not have access to methods of birth control. Halima Dahir is trying to change that. She has trained these women from local villages on the use of cycle beads. This is a group of safe motherhood. They are comprising of 30 of them. It's important, it's not against the religion. Culturally it's accepted because it's just a matter of counting the number of days. And instead of counting with their fingers, now they are using the bead. So they cannot, uh, if it's something that they have agreed with the husband, they cannot mess with the dates. The way we are using it, they will take it as part and parcel of them as part and parcel of them, and they will be using it on daily basis. We have been able to get out of the area, and we have been able to get out of the area.
Ah, si shara yetu watu hiyo nasema iko. Na wale wengine anasema sawa anaenda kuchukua hii, anatumia, anaelewana bana yake. Ni upe mpaka hapa. The aim is also to make husbands willing participants. Na kutoanza hapo mpaka huko ni peace night. Unaweza sal celebrate vile unataka. <laughs> Across Kenya, USAID is providing lessons to the rest of Africa on how to successfully and sustainably improve health service delivery and usage.